And we're going to look at Luke chapter 2. Chapter 2, starting at verse 8. It's the classic Christmas passage. Luke 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So, in most manger scenes, nativity scenes, you have these three wise men here, and uh, you have you have shepherds usually too. And these shepherds, we'll talk about animals tonight, but uh, the shepherds. They have an important function here as well. And uh, if you have shepherds at your nativity scene or if you're driving by one and see one and you see the shepherds there, it says something. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Why, Why are the shepherds there? First of all, to notice something here, of all of the people that the angels could have appeared to, they appeared to some shepherds. The angels appeared to not the temple or the palace, some shepherds. There was no press conference. There was no uh, alert the authorities. No, it was appearing to shepherds. Shepherds. Now, shepherds were of the peasant class. They were not people that people looked up to or anybody who was highly esteemed in any way. They were just shepherds. Nothing, nothing that people really, really think is all that special. Mary and Joseph weren't all that special either by human standards. Shepherds were outsiders, actually. If you think about migrant workers, us today, they, they travel a lot. They, they don't really put down roots and so... Nobody really gets to know them, and so they're kind of seen with suspicion a little bit. Well, shepherds were kind of like that, at least most of them were. They, they traveled a lot. They had to kind of go with where the flock needed to go, and so they, they just kind of traveled around, and they didn't really put down roots necessarily. Um, they did have a really rough job, though, being a shepherd. I don't know. How many of you have ever owned sheep? Or raise sheep? A couple? Okay. Well, I, I don't know too much about sheep, but apparently they're, they're really high maintenance, and watching them is, is a big job, especially if you don't have you know, fences and, and stuff like that to, to contain them, because they, they depended on their shepherd for everything. If, uh, if a sheep is kind of all by itself, even if the flock is in view, they can't find their way to the flock usually. They need, they need the shepherd to, to keep, them, keep them together all the time. It's kind of like, uh, if you think about, think about toddlers, it's like watching a bunch of toddlers. They just kind of go wherever and do whatever, and, and you've got to keep your eye on them all the time or they're going to get in trouble. Um, and moreover, they're constantly at risk of thieves and wild animals because sheep are valuable. I mean, each, each sheep or lamb was, was worth quite a bit. And so, if you 
got one, that would be kind of like, you know, pickpocketing. And there would be people out there who would do that. So you, as a shepherd, you had to keep watch on that. And in verse 8, where it says there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night, it actually literally says keeping watches. In other words, there were different, there were different sets of time when they could sleep. So they would take turns watching the flock and sleeping. So this is likely into the night somewhere. So most of them were probably sleeping, and there were maybe a couple awake at this time. And so then in verse 9, when the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, uh, they were likely awoken by the blinding glory of God. They were probably sleeping and resting and having, after a long day of chasing after all these sheep, maybe fighting off a wild animal or two, chasing a robber away. Finally, they get to rest their eyes and what a wake-up call that is to have an angel appear with the whole glory of God. I mean, it's one thing to be woken up but to be woken up by that, I mean, that, that's startling even if you're already awake. In verse 16, after the, they say, let's go to Bethlehem, it says they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. It sounds like they abandoned their posts to see this baby. They, they, they just took off. And... They hurried away. I don't think they took their sheep along with them. Or at least it doesn't let us to think that very easily. So they, they left their posts. They, they left their jobs to see what this angel had said. But this is, this is not just any announcement. This is the greatest news in history. Look at the uh, screen here with me. Who is this mediator? True God and at the same time truly human and truly righteous. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is given us to set us completely free and to make us right with God. To make us right with God. That's the greatest gift. To be made right with God. In our sin nature, we and God are not on good terms. In Jesus Christ, we are on good terms. And to be on good terms with God is the greatest gift that we could have. So why do we put shepherds at nativity scenes? First of all, we have to say that nativity scenes are not snapshots of the first Christmas, but a message in picture of who Jesus is. Because... On that first night, the Magi weren't there. The wise men, they, they weren't there. So, so the fact that we put them on there suggests this is not a snapshot of the first night. This is a statement about who Jesus is. Unlike the Magi, the shepherds, they were there that first night. It says when they got there, they found him in the manger, like the angel had said. So this was the first night they were there. But, the shepherds say something just as much. One thing it says is that Jesus is for the Jews, which are shepherds, as well as the Gentiles, the Magi. The Magi, they were Gentiles. They were from the east. They were from another land. They had to cross a lot of borders to get there. But the shepherds, they were just nearby. They were Jews. They were the people of Jesus. And they needed to hear who Jesus was too. Jesus is for Jews as well as Gentiles. Last week, there was a, a big paper released in, uh, by the Vatican in Rome saying that uh, we don't need to witness to Jews. And Jesus came to save everybody, Jews and Gentiles. 
the fact that the Jews had the Old Testament, that all points to Jesus. The, the Jews need Jesus as much as, as we do, as Gentiles. Everybody needs Jesus. That's what major scene says. That's what the Bible says. Jesus is also for the poor as well as the rich. The shepherds, they were poor. They were, they were peasants. The magi, they have these expensive gifts to bring. Gold, incense, myrrh. And uh, the shepherds, that, there's a shepherd there. He's carrying a sheep. But they didn't have too much to offer. The sheep that they were watching were probably not theirs. Usually, usually you didn't watch your own sheep. So, they probably didn't have too much to bring, but they went and saw, and then they went and told. Jesus is for poor people as well as rich. So, you have magi there bringing expensive gifts, and you have a shepherd there who doesn't have a whole lot to bring. Now, for most of us here, we are pretty rich and pretty educated by world standards. So we would represent the Magi. We're also Gentiles. But Jesus is for people who are never had the chance to go to school and people who can barely pay their bills. Jesus is for also lowly people with nothing to brag about. Shepherds are people who if they were standing in a circle with a bunch of other different kind of people there, they probably wouldn't have much to brag about. Shepherd, being a shepherd wasn't one of the esteemed careers that, that people would look up to. It was just a way to make ends meet. And we like to brag about ourselves in different ways. We, we like to think highly of ourselves and we like to think that we're something. But shepherds are not people who have much to brag about. So if you, if you don't feel like anything special all the time, or if you are kind of down on yourself once in a while, you're in good company. Because the angels, instead of appearing to people who had something to brag about, they appeared to shepherds. So Jesus is for people like you and me, who don't have a lot to brag about. Jesus is also the great shepherd. And the shepherds flock to him. So he's the greatest of the great shepherds. We have wise men here, people who were really smart and uh, well-educated. Jesus is the wisest wise man. And you have the wisest people flocking to him. He's also the great shepherd, and you have shepherds flocking to him. And so, Jesus is a great shepherd, and he's the great wise man. That's also why they are there. These shepherds, they had this news announced to them. And right away, they're like, Let's go. Let's see. And that's what they did. Apparently, they dropped everything to go and see this amazing news that the Lord has told us about. And so they did. Jesus is good news, worth dropping everything to see. He's worth dropping everything. There's nothing in your life that compares with belonging and knowing Jesus Christ. There's a lot of important things in our life, for sure. And there's a lot of things that we maybe didn't, wouldn't want to live without, but Jesus tops them all. Because as much as everything else in your life is important, being right with God is incomparable. Nothing compares with being right with God having that peace with him. When the angels announce on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests, they're not saying, oh, an end to, 
an end to all disagreement and warfare and stuff like that. No, they're talking about peace between God and us now. Jesus didn't come to, to stop all wars. If, if He did, He failed. Because we've had a lot of war since He's been around. But He did come to make peace between us and God. And that, that's a little harder to understand. You know, that's not something that you can measure very easily or count very well. But there's something greater about that. Because everything that happens here and now, this will be done in a while. We're only here for a short time. But being right with God, that's eternal. That's greater than anything else. When we say Jesus is the greatest gift, that's what we're talking about. We don't get to have just peace with one another. We get to have peace with God. Suddenly, God and us, we're okay now. That's a big deal. They not only came and saw, but they went and told. Jesus is news worth telling everybody. When we talk about the good news of Jesus Christ, that good news is you can be right with God. You and God can be okay. You can be like this. There's nothing greater than that. And it says that they went out and told everybody. Suddenly, they had something to brag about. They themselves didn't have a lot to brag about about themselves, but they had news to brag about. And that's the case for all of us. We might not be able to brag too much about ourselves. We might not have a whole lot that's cool about us. But we have some news that can blow everybody else away. You can be right with God because of Jesus Christ. The more you know who Jesus is and the longer that you belong to Him and put your trust in Him, the more you'll see that that really is the greatest news ever. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord, our God in heaven, Lord, you sent your Son to be one of us so that we might be saved. Lord, thank you for this great gift of Jesus Christ. Help us to know him and to belong in him, to him and to put our trust in him. Lord, we pray that we would see how great of a gift this really is. And that, Lord, we would know what it means to have peace with you and to enjoy that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.